All right, let's take the temperature of our Tuesday MPs who are here in the studio with me. Conservative Stella Ambler, a liberal Yvonne Jones, and NDP Ginny Sims. All right, Ginny Sims, your party stands accused of sending out 1.8 million pieces of mail. And uh, we have a photo of one of the culprits, apparently. We'll show that now. And, and uh, they don't public, pub, uh, sorry, do not qualify for public money. How do you plead on all these charges? Well, first of all, I think, as you know, and everybody knows, all political parties send out and have sent out mailings into other ridings. Mm -hmm. There was actually a ruling uh, by, made by uh, the Speaker in the House after I became an MP when some Liberal mailings into somebody else's riding were put in question and the Speaker said, well, you know, MPs are allowed to mail and just let it go. And it seems strange to me that here we have an internal bo you know, body that, by the way, it's the NDP who has said that it should be open, independent and transparent, and the other two parties conspired to keep it secretive. Is that what it is, a conspiracy? No, I'm just saying they tried to keep it secretive, and now they're refusing to take a look at mailings from the other two parties, and I've got examples of some of them here. Well, we're and, gonna bring them up in a minute. And, we'll you know, and I look at these, and then I look at the mailings that went out uh, under MP, um, uh, Megan Leslie, and I look at that, it starts off with friends and it's just talking about the environmental issues. On the other hand, when you look at some of them that have been put out All right, by the Conservatives, these, uh, we are put really <laughs> getting way, way over the top. So I think here what you've got an example is two old time parties feeling threatened by the NDP's uh, strategy of going out and communicating oh, with one members of them. Yeah. and one trying to shut it down. Okay. And trying to shut it down. Uh, and when you look at these that are on the stage, yeah. then you can actually say and you compare them to say, come on, let's take a look at all the mailings or let's just not stop and pick and just pick on one party because they're doing what you were doing. Stella, it's a kangaroo court, <laughs> clearly. Why are you it's picking on these? Uh, Why are you goodness. picking on them? Yeah, well, let's see. First of all, because I don't see anywhere here where it says, John, authorized by the official agent for the new Democratic Party. And you know, I, I'd like I'd like to know, and maybe Ginny can tell me how an, a new Democratic Party flyer that has NDP logos, party logos on it, and looks like a campaign brochure, and is authorized. It actually says authorized, and that indicates that it's campaign literature. We all know this. Those of us who campaign realize that during a campaign, uh, every piece of literature has to be signed off by one's official agent. The, the mailings that went in. House of Commons envelopes that were franked, i.e. the postage was paid for by um, NDP members of parliament, went in these envelopes and we're not talking about a few, we're not talking about you know, an NDP member who mailed five or ten or a hundred pieces of mail outside their writing, we're talking about 1.8 million. The amount of money that needs to be paid back is staggering. In the millions. I mean, well, what, what we're dealing with here is is the fact that the NDP breached the rules of Parliament. Uh, whether someone else did or whether they didn't, I guess those things will remain to be seen as we go along. But as we know right now, the rulings of the Internal Economy Commission has said that the content in the mail outs that the NDP put out were electioneering in, in its finest form. And therefore, it breaches the parliamentary rules of what MPs can and cannot do. And and, you know, based on that particular aspect of it, I think that the NDP needs to own up to what has happened. A mistake, 1.8 million pieces of mail sent out on the taxpayer's budget promoting the NDP party is not a mistake. But hold on, let's, let's quickly, I'll, I'll, I'll help, uh, I'll help Ginny here a little bit. I sure. mean, Bob Ray sends this thing out and he says, why does Craig Scott make it easier to break up our country? That's an NDP MP, clearly attacking him. Tom Mulcair, reckless spending, higher taxes. Stephen Harper, strong economic leadership. Seems to me they're all bad. They're all, they're all partisan. Maybe we should ban these entirely. Do you guys think that's an option? Should we just stop doing mail outs? Everyone, everyone else has stopped mailing out letters. Well, stop I these. Think, uh, I'd, I li I'd like to communicate here. with. I think oh, what's sorry. critical here is that it is good for MPs to communicate, but the rules have to be applied the same to all the parties and to all the MPs. And, you know, the uh, Liberal Party also sends out mailings into other ridings where they have the 
liberal logo on there and all of that information and you can see from the conservative samples and I've looked at quite a lot this afternoon uh, some that have gone in writings very close to mine uh, I have looked at some of them and I immediately think these are way over the top right and then when you look at putting something out on the environment and then it gets this kind of a reaction but once again it goes back to the board of internal economy really has become more of a kangaroo court when when it's not even prepared to look at mailings from other MPs or other parties and just only wants to concentrate there's, on the NDP. There, there's no defense here for the NDP. The rules are very clear. If other parliamentarians have broken the rules, then they should be dealt with as well. But the NDP has been consistently, for the past eight months that this investigation has been going on, they have not provided any information that is contrary to the ruling that we see today. Therefore, they know they that what no they chance. did... Therefore, what they, they know what they did was wrong. They know that they used taxpayers' money to advance the position of the new Democratic Party and not to inform Canadians of policies of government or the policies of NDP, which is what the, the, uh, the program was meant to do for all parliamentarians, to bring information not. to ridings but all around the country. Why are you attacking the Speaker's credibility? This, this, this Speaker has shown nothing but integrity but all along. Andrew Shearer is under the gun because... And they know full well. That, 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 that the that is speaker can't actually speak in public okay. about this, even that though... That is communication that came out of the speaker's office through emails and letters where clarification was sought that the NDP last night was not even allowed to present or to and to say that they've had all this opportunity, I think is another one of those masking things. But really, here Ooh, was evidence, here was uh, a letter... Uh, an email that clearly uh, the NDP wanted to put on the record mm -hmm. and it is out there, it's public knowledge right now but what I'm saying is I'm not into conspiracy theories per se, but what I am great is there should be <laughs> fairness. No, no, no. There should be. There's a big difference between seeing <laughs> reds under the beds than actually looking at it to say, here we are, if no. we've got a problem, let's take a look at what other MPs and other parties are doing as well. Not just say we're oh, only going to take a look at one. It was a, it was it was the House of Commons administration of the non-partisan completely non-partisan by administrative body of the House of Commons that provided the report to the Board of Internal Economy exactly. um, and they were the ones and they simply adopted the report and it was and it was it was only the NDP who were trying to cover up they didn't didn't want this to get out they we wanted nothing to cover up they, why did you go outside you have, and have it printed? you have why didn't yeah, you have no, it printed no, in house to cover up. can I there's, see if there's one consensus here that we should look at abolishing these. Do you think they could abolish these? Like you're sending uh, them to writings on the other side of the country to trash talk each other. What's the point? I, well, I can't imagine not being allowed to communicate with my constituents. Do uh, by email. So Save us the postage. No. Uh, I absolutely I, I, uh, like the no. ability to communicate with my constituents in my writing. Not uh, everybody has email, and you know, and I get other positive writings. feedback. I'm talking about I get positive feedback Do from my writing that they like receiving these. And as a matter of fact, right. the last mail I out. I they should have to receive I had over them 2,000 responses. With, with NDP logos. Uh, oh, I've and, only and mailed them to my writing, so uh, that's what I use the program for. Fair. It's a tool to All keep right. them informed. I've got to move along because like the, the Privacy Commissioner nominee, uh, Danielle Terrier, uh, Terrier, Terrier, sorry, <laughs> Terrine, uh, was up before MPs and senators today. Uh, the NDP, as we know, uh, isn't too pleased with his appointment. He's a public servant, has a long history, even working with legislation that does raise some privacy uh, concerns. However, you know, he seems to be on your page on some issues on this, Jenny. He says, let's split the controversial cyberbullying bill. Let's deal with privacy issues. He was singing your song. Are you having second thoughts about your opposition to his appointment? I think you've got to take a look at how appointments happen. And this is another case where this person wasn't even on the recommended list from the panel that was charged with it and then appears. But the appearance of confidentiality, especially when you're looking at privacy issues and impartiality, becomes 
becomes really, really important. And whether we like it or not, this is a man, and I've never met him, but I will say well who has given a lot of advice and actually even helped to construct some of the very policies that now he's going to have to make rulings on. And I would say that why, once again, would this government appoint somebody where there's going to be a question about his cred oh, about his ability no to be impartial? There is yeah. no question. This is a man who has served the public for over 30 years. He's got the experience. He's got, uh, um, he's got the background. Uh, he's very bright and had and is only sure committed right. and, and absolutely 100% qualified uh, to do the job. And you know, I, I just I, I think it's quite. Um, amusing that the, uh, the the NDP wants to have it both ways. Uh, first, he's not qualified; he's not good enough, and um, you know it, this wasn't done properly. But then, as soon as he says something that well, they think they might agree with on a particular bill, they say they you know they want to have it both ways. They say, oh well, we I should listen to that. him. I you know? didn't well, say that. You just uh, did. no, I didn't say. I think he's very, it's okay very uh, appropriate for the position. Um, you know, he served uh, across uh, various governments. He served uh, as a a public servant and advisor to ministers that were in the Liberal government, ministers that were in the Conservative government. He's not shown any um, any areas, in in my opinion, where he's been political in his thinking, but rather been very much in the interest of, of the public in his recommendations and the work he's done. And I think his record stands for itself. I, I'm absolutely shocked that the NDP would take the, the stand that they're taking oh, and the attack the credibility right. of, uh, of this individual before we he's don't. even had an opportunity. Opportunity is, to speak for been, himself. He's been nominated by the both the MPP, mm -hmm. the panel, and yeah. the Senate. It's going to happen, yeah. and uh, you're going to have to see what happens. I guess. I'm yeah. sure. And here ends our the best. Only ones. We're agree We're agreeing on that. <laughs> There's a but new coalition, new liberal coalition. All right. Here ends our. Sometimes they make sense. Thank you all. Another conspiracy theory by the NDP. So don't have to believe it. No, no, no. It's a reality. You don't have to believe it. All right. It's a reality in my mind. Got off the mic, Alison. All right.